Well, good evening and Merry Christmas. I want to welcome all of you to this Christmas Eve service as we celebrate the birth of Christ, the hope of the world. Uh, you know, tonight is a night where Christians don't just remember, but we worship. We're not just remembering something that happened 2,000 years ago, but we are worshiping our great God who came into the world because he loves the world because he loves you and because he loves me. Christmas is the greatest love story ever told. And tonight we are joining with Christians all over the world to retell that story through scriptures and through song. If you're new tonight, if you're joining us for the very first time, we're so glad to have you with us. I wanna make sure that you have located the digital worship guide on our website. That's gonna help you to follow along for the remainder of the service. Kids, We've got some great activities and videos for you on our website tonight, but we're excited to have you join us for this service. I think you're really going to enjoy it. I want to remind everyone uh, to grab a candle and to have it ready as we're going to be lighting those together at the end of the service. But let me invite all of us to stand now for our call to worship as God himself calls us and invites us not just to remember, but to worship call to worship this morning is from, or from this evening is from Luke chapter 2. Today in the city of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Glory, Glory to, to God, God in the highest heaven, and, and on earth peace, peace to those on whom his favor rests. rests. Our God has come to save. O, o come, come, let, let us, us adore, adore him. him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Hi, Resurrection Oakland Church. We are the Tan family. My name is Russell. I'm Oliver. And I'm Laura. And we cannot wait for Christmas tomorrow. In our home, one thing we look forward to and love about Christmas is... The music. The carols. Yup, and the singing. It's the most wonderful time of the year. And on this special night, we get to sing about the gospel together. Gospel means good news. The good news is that God came once in a manger, and he will come again one day to live with us and wipe away every tear. So we invite you to join our church family tonight as we sing and long for Christmas together. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas Eve! Eve.
Amen, church. I know we all long for the day that Jesus Emmanuel will come and we look forward to it so soon. If you don't know me, my name is Malachi. I'm so happy to share these moments with you. And I have a special question just for you. What do you look forward to the most around the holiday season? For some people it's the lights, like those on this tree. For some people it's a Christmas sweater, like the one I have home. <laughs> people like me, the part of Christmas we look forward to the most is the food. Come here, Lex. The food is Lexi's favorite part too. Say hi. So here with me, I have mac and cheese, ham, and of course my favorite, collard greens. The only way I eat my vegetables and my favorite part of the Christmas meal. I look forward to them every single year. And that reminds me of how we long for Jesus and the joy that he brought on Christmas day. God's people lived in sin, death, and fear. But Jesus brought hope and joy into the world. The prophets foretold of the day when God himself would come down to save his people. And Jesus fulfilled those prophecies. The prophet Isaiah said, a virgin will have a son and we shall call him Emmanuel. The prophet Malachi, where I get my name. How cool is that? He said, the sun will bring healing in his wings. So tonight, as we sing and hear more stories and maybe even enjoy a good meal, let's also wait in the hunger and expectation for Jesus to come and to satisfy our deepest longing. Let's ask him to bring healing and let us hope for when he comes again in glory to make all things new. All right.
Resurrection Oakland. My name is Amanda Collison, and if I haven't met you yet, I run our Res Kids Ministry at Resurrection Oakland, and this is my family. Hi, I'm Eva. Hi, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Greg. Hi, I'm Clark. One of the things we love the most about Christmas time is spending time together as a family. And something that makes families special is that all families are unique. Some people are family by blood and other people are family by choice. Some families are really big and other families are really small. And today we are gonna look at Jesus's family here at the Nativity. This is Jesus's mom, Mary. This is Jesus's father, Joseph. We also have shepherds and wise kings and they came to bring their presence and their praise to Jesus. And did you know that Jesus saves both the poorest shepherds and the richest of kings from their own sin and darkness? Um, the, the angels came to sing to the shepherds. And this is the baby Jesus, and he is the good news of Christmas. Now, whether your family is really, really, really big or really, really, really small, I think we can all agree that this year has been a little strange and maybe even a little lonely for most of us. But you know what? We can all trust in the Christmas hope that we will never be alone. That just like Joseph and Mary, we have a story, we have a part to play in this family. Jesus invites us into this story, his story, and Jesus invites us into his family. So church, family of God, let us come to God and worship now.
music just in your houses, just your voices. Hello everyone, me llamo Sheila, my name is Sheila, and I just have to ask, did you hear some of the lyrics of the song that we just sang? We just sang, long lay the world in sin and error pining, till he, that is Jesus, appeared. El mundo entero, the entire world, all of us, whether we realize it or not, long for Jesus. We long for peace unity, love, and role that only He can bring. And this is why I really love Christmas. I love that Christmas is for everyone. Jesus came for everyone, for all people, people from every culture, every tribe, every family, and people who speak every tongue and language. You've heard that I myself can speak a different language. It's called Spanish or Espanol. And I'd love to share and teach my language with you. I'll say something and you can repeat after me. Ready? Palabra. I'll say it one more time. Just say it after me. Palabra. Very good. Palabra means word in Spanish. And I'd love to share with you the words that God himself speaks to us this evening in John 1. In the beginning was la palabra, the word, and la palabra was with God, and la palabra was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of hus a husband's will, but born of God. La palabra became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is la palabra de Dios. Thanks be to God. Gracias a Dios. Well, thank you, Sheila, for reading that passage and for sharing with us. I've loved getting to hear from others in our congregation tonight as we've been reading about and sharing about the Christmas story. You know, these verses that we just read in John chapter 1, they speak of that very story. They, uh, they're not the verses that we typically think of when we think of the Christmas story. We, we think about other parts of the Gospels uh, that talk about the birth of Christ and the, the wise uh, men and the angels and the shepherds and the stars, all these other places that talk about the events and the details surrounding the Christmas story. But these verses in John chapter 1 they might be the greatest summary of what those events actually mean. And it actually all comes in, in one verse, verse 14. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Everything that we have been reading about and singing about tonight is summed up in that one verse. John calls Jesus the Word, which is kind of interesting. 
because there are a lot of names and titles that get attributed to Jesus in the Gospels, but for the writer John, for the Gospel of John, the very first title that he uses is the Word. Now, what is that all about? Well, think about it this way. What do we use words for? What's the primary purpose that they serve? I I remember when my kids were very small and they first began to talk. I remember their first words, Dada. Mama, mine. <laughs> Those were their first three words. I think it was in the opposite order, actually. But, but it was so exciting. You know why? Because now we could communicate. And you see, that's what words are for. That's their main purpose. Jesus is the word. That means that he is the primary way God communicates to us. James Boyce, who is a pastor for years in Philadelphia, on a, in a sermon on this passage, actually, he, he quoted a skeptic who, who once said to him about Christianity. He said, you speak of trusting God and of praying to him, but it all seems so one-sided. We speak to God, but he never speaks back to us. And I think a lot of people even many Christians, maybe even you tonight, we feel this way. We feel like we are doing all of the praying and all of the speaking, but God is silent. We feel like we are talking to God, but God is not talking back to us. And John is saying, no, no, no. God wants to talk to you. He, he, not only does he want to communicate with you, but he has communicated through his son the word God has spoken I see the question is what is God trying to tell us through Jesus what is he trying to communicate to us well two things and we actually see both of them in this same verse verse 14 the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us we have seen his glory the glory of the one and only who came from the father full of grace and truth. Grace and truth, these are the two things that God is trying to tell us through Jesus. We actually sing about both of them in the Christmas hymn, Joy to the World. He rules the world with truth and grace. What is Christmas about? It's about truth and it's about grace. And if you want to understand the Christmas story, You need to understand both of those things because one is telling us about the radical claim of Christianity and the other one is telling us about, excuse me, the radical claim of Christmas and the other is telling us about the wonder of Christmas. Let's talk about truth and the radical claim of Christmas. I know we've got a lot of kids watching tonight. One of my favorite children's book is this short little book called The Pirate Who Tried to Capture the Moon. It's about this angry pirate who lives alone on an island and everything he sees, he tries to capture. He tries to make it his own. He sees other ships at sea and so he captures them. He finds other treasure and so he captures it. He's a selfish pirate, actually. And one night, he looks up and he sees the moon and he wants to have that too. And so he tries all sorts of things he, he climbs to the top of his mast to see if he can grab the moon. He, he ties himself to a flock of birds to see if he can fly up to the moon. He fires his cannons to see if he can get the moon to surrender. But none of it works. You know why? Because the moon is too big. You see, many people would say that anyone who claims to know who God is and what God is like is like a pirate trying to capture the moon. Who could ever really know what God is like? I mean, who's to say whether he's like Allah or Buddha or any of the millions of gods 
in Hinduism. God is too big. He is too infinite. He's too invisible. He's too mysterious. He's too silent. How could we ever really know? Well, in John chapter 14, Jesus says this. He says, I am the way. I'm the truth. There's that word again, truth. And he says, I am the life. And then his disciples say to him, Lord, show us the Father and that will be enough for us. And Jesus looks at them and he says, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. This is Jesus' way of saying, if you've seen me, you've seen God. (laughs) It's Jesus' way of saying, if you want to know the truth about God, if you want to know what God is really like, look at me. Now, that's a radical claim. And and John actually puts it this way in verse 14. He says, the word became flesh. In other words, Jesus is God in human form. He is God with skin on. Hebrews chapter 1 says this, that Jesus is the exact representation of God's being. See, what is God like? God is exactly like Jesus. Colossians chapter 1 says this, Jesus is the image of the invisible God. In other words, Jesus reveals to us the truth of who God is and what God is like. Our our family has been cranking through the Mandalorian, uh, like I think 99% of the rest of our country right now. And uh, we love this show, but you know, when you first start watching the show, all you can think is, who, who is the Mandalorian? Who's behind, who's behind that helmet? Who's behind that mask? It's so mysterious. And you just keep wondering who it is until this moment where you actually find out and you think, or at least I thought, oh my goodness, it's, it's the guy from Narcos. It's the cop from Narcos. He's the Mandalorian. But, but here's the point. You don't know who the Mandalorian is until he takes off his helmet. He reveals himself. And you see, Jesus is God's way of taking off the helmet. He is God's self-revelation. He's God's primary means of communication to say, this is who I am. This is the kind of God that I am. This is what I am like. People say we can't really know what God is like, but Christmas says, yes, you can. The the, the radical claim of Christmas, Christmas is that you can know the truth about what God is like. And that brings us to the to the second word, actually, which is grace. Grace tells us about the wonder of Christmas. See, the the, the claim of Christmas is that you can know what God is like because of Jesus. But the wonder of Christmas is the main thing that Jesus shows us about what God is like. Most of us, when we think about God, we tend to think that God is, is holy or just or powerful. And God is all of those things. In fact, we see all of those things in the life of Jesus. Jesus calls people to repent and to turn from their life of sin and to follow him in a life of discipleship. And, and he, he shows incredible power. He, he heals the sick. He raises the dead. He calms the storms. And we, we learn so much about the nature and the character of Jesus through the actions and the words of Jesus. But I want you to think about this for just a moment. In the four Gospels, in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we have 89 chapters that tell us what Jesus is like. 89 chapters. But in those 89 chapters, there is one place where Jesus opens his mouth and he tells us what he's like. He talks about his character and his nature And it's in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Jesus says this, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, 
And here it is. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. It's the one place in 89 chapters where Jesus tells us what he's like. And Pastor Dane Ortland, in his book, Gentle and Lowly, which is all about that verse, he, he says this. He says, in the one place in the Bible where the Son of God pulls back the veil and lets us peer down into the core of who he is and what he is like, we are not told that he is austere and demanding in heart. We're not told that he is exalted and dignified in heart. We're not even told that he is joyful and generous in heart. No, when Jesus tells us what is most true of him, when he exposes the innermost recesses of his being, what we find there is gentle and lowly. And if we were asked to say only one thing about who Jesus is, we would be honoring his own teaching if our answer is gentle and lowly. Jesus is gentle and lowly. Translation, he's tender. He is open. He is kind. He is welcoming. He is understanding. And he is full of grace. And because he is full of grace, what God the Father is telling us is that he is full of grace. He has grace for your sin, grace for your shame, grace for your sadness, grace for your suffering, grace for every moment of your life. God longs to be gracious to you. It is, it is the most central part of who he is according to Jesus. And you see, nowhere do we see that more clearly than Christmas, where God comes into the world as a person to live and to die and to rise again in our behalf, where he comes not just to a manger, but to a cross so that broken, messy people can know him and be in relationship with him all because of grace. Not because of anything that we have done, but because of everything that he has done. See, Christmas says Jesus came to show us the truth of who God is. You can know what God is really like. That's the claim of Christmas. And the main thing that Jesus shows us about God is that he is a God of grace. And that's the wonder of Christmas. And the question I'd like to ask you tonight is this. Has your heart been captured by that claim and that wonder? The, uh, the pirate that I was telling you about earlier, well, the one who's desperate to capture the moon, after all of his other ideas fail, he has one last idea. And he thinks to himself, I know what I'll do. I, I'll capture everything that the moon loves and I'll lure the moon down to me. And so he thinks the moon loves to shine through curtains and so he captures curtains. And the moon loves to float on pools of water and so he captures frog ponds. And the moon loves poetry and so he captures poets. Now here's, here's how the book ends. Sure enough, when the moon looked down and saw that everything it loved was gone, it moved down to look a little closer. But as it came closer and closer, the pirate saw it grow. As it drew nearer, it became larger than anything the pirate had ever seen, and he began to be very afraid. He thought, maybe if I return all that I've captured, that will surely stop the moon. But it didn't. Still the moon came down. Moonlight spread over the waves. It covered his empty island. The pirate stared into its light, and a wild shiver ran through him like a wave. He forgot about being afraid. He forgot about being fierce. He lowered his sword. He dropped his armor, and he whispered, Moon, wonderful moon, 
it is you who have captured me. And at that moment in the middle of the night, there was now someone new that the moon loved and who loved the moon. You cannot capture God any more than you can capture the moon. He's too infinite. He is too powerful. He is too holy. But the good news of Christmas is this. The God that we could never capture came down to capture us. The one who is infinite became finite. The one who is all-powerful became weak and helpless and vulnerable. The one who is unassailably holy became something that you could hug. The one who is unknowable became knowable. See, you, you don't have to guess what God is like. Christmas says you can know what God is like. And not only can you know what he is like, but you can know him. And not only can you know him, but you can be loved by him. Have you received that love? The word became flesh. And he made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's pray. Father, would you fill our hearts tonight with the wonder of Christmas that you, the God of the universe, the one who is holy and just and powerful, sees us and knows us and loves us and longs to be gracious to us. We praise you tonight for the gift of your son who is the most tangible expression of that love and grace. And I pray tonight for those who have never experienced that love that tonight might might be the night that they would. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your coming at Christmas. And we long for your return and the day that we will see you face to face and we will know your love and your grace to a degree that we cannot yet fathom. We pray all of this In your name, amen. Let's continue to sing and worship together.
the time to go ahead and light your candles in your homes. You could grab those, get your lighters. Tonight we have been singing and hearing about Christ, our light. And not only do we have the light, but Jesus himself said to his followers, you are the light of the world. And so tonight, as we prepare to be sent out, not only do we receive his light, but now we get to share his light, his good news, with the whole entire world. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is Lord. While shepherds kept their watching o'er silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the so glad that you joined us tonight. We hope that you'll join us again this Sunday at 10 a.m. But until then, let me invite you to lift up your hands, to lift up your heads, to lift up your hearts, and to receive God's good word on your life. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the good news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Let us go forth to serve the world as those who love our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God.
to bed.